Hello and welcome back everyone. So continuing our discussion about the respiratory pharmacology. In this video, we will talk about the oxygen therapy and we will cover topics including the oxygen storage, the oxygen delivery devices, the indications, the monitoring and the adverse effects of oxygen therapy and then we will talk about the carbon dioxide retention and hazards and risks of oxygen therapy. So oxygen therapy means the use of supplemental oxygen in medical treatment and the oxygen can be stored as a compressed gas in high pressure oxygen storage cylinders same that you can see in this picture here or the oxygen can also be stored as a liquid in doer cryogenic liquid cylinders the liquid cylinders can hold more volume of oxygen than the high pressure oxygen storage cylinders now there is also the oxygen concentrators and those are available for long-term home use and they work by concentrating the oxygen from the room air by selectively removing the nitrogen using electricity now let's talk about the oxygen delivery devices so the oxygen is commonly delivered to the patient through the nasal cannula that you can see in this picture here so the nasal cannula can provide oxygen at low flow rates of one to six liters per minute and the nasal cannula is capable of delivering oxygen concentration of 24 to 40 percent now the oxygen is also commonly delivered to the patient through the simple face mask that you can see in this picture here the simple face mask connect with the oxygen tube here and it has two open holes on the sides to allow the expired air to go out and the simple face mask can provide oxygen at 5 to 10 liters per minute and it is capable of delivering oxygen concentration of 35 to 55 percent now the oxygen can also be delivered through the venturi mask that you can see in this picture here and the venturi mask can accurately deliver a predetermined oxygen concentration of 24 to 50 percent now the oxygen can also be delivered through the partial rebreather mask which is based on the simple mask but with a reservoir bag so the partial rebreather mask is the same that you can see in this picture here but with two holes on the side so it is basically a simple face mask but with the reservoir bag now if the holes on the side are one-way valves same as you can see in this picture then it is called a non-rebreather mask that we will talk about in the next slide now the partial rebreather mask can provide oxygen at 5 to 15 liters per minute of flow rate and it is capable of delivering oxygen concentration of 40 to 70 percent now the oxygen can also be delivered through a non-rebreather mask which is also called a reservoir mask now the non-rebreather mask draws the oxygen from attached reservoir bag with a one-way valves that direct the exhaled air out of the mask so as you can see in this picture this is the non-rebreather mask it has a one-way valve that you can see right here it allows the exhaled air to go through the one-way valve 
and it prevents the room air from coming back into the inside of the mask. Now the partial rebreather mask can provide oxygen at flow rates of higher to 10 liters per minute and it is capable of delivering oxygen concentration of 60 to 80 percent. Now if the flow rates for the non-rebreather mask was adjusted to lower than 10 liters per minute, the reservoir bag would collapse. So the flow rates has to be higher than 10 liters per minute. Now the oxygen can also be delivered through the bag valve mask that you can see in this picture here. This is the oxygen coming here and attaching to the bag. And it can also be delivered through the endotracheal tube, the laryngeal mask airway, and it can be given through bypassing the airway in ECMO, which is the extracorporeal membrane oxygenation therapy. Now let's talk about the indications of oxygen therapy. So the oxygen therapy is indicated for treatment of acute hypoxic conditions, such as an acute myocardial infarction, acute pulmonary edema, carbon monoxide poisoning, cardiac and respiratory arrest, major trauma, anaphylaxis, major bleeding, shock, active convulsions, hypothermia, metabolic acidosis, when the bicarbonate is less than 18 millimoles per liter, and in treatment of decompression sickness. Now the decompression sickness is what happens with divers who dive through deep water and come back up quickly. This would result to the formation of air bubbles inside their blood and this would ultimately end up with air embolism. Now oxygen therapy is also indicated for chronic hypoxic conditions meaning the oxygen therapy would used for long term and examples for those include the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, the cystic fibrosis, the chronic bronchitis, the emphysema and the end stage heart failure. Now the oxygen therapy is also used in treatment of cluster headache and in induction of anesthesia. Now the British Medical Journal recommends that the oxygen therapy is stopped for saturations higher than 96% and it should not be started for saturations higher than 90% because studies have shown association between excessive oxygenation and mortality. And this is especially true for acute myocardial infarction. The oxygen should not be started for acute myocardial infarction for concentrations less than 90% because else this would end up in more dead cardiac tissue. Now exceptions for this rule is the carbon monoxide poisoning, the cluster headache, the sickle cell crisis, and pneumothorax. This means that in these conditions, the oxygen therapy is started even when concentrations is higher than 90%. And in cases of carbon monoxide poisoning or cardiac arrest, the saturations of the delivered oxygen should be as high as possible. Now let's talk about the monitoring of the oxygen therapy. So the oxygen therapy is monitored by the pulse oximetry that you can see in the picture here, or it can be monitored through the arterial blood gas analysis. And the oxygen should be titrated to a target level based on the pulse oximetry of 94 to 96% in most patients or it is titrated to a target level of 88 to 92 percent in patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease to avoid the carbon dioxide retention. Now let's talk a little bit about 
the arterial blood gas analysis since it is used in monitoring of oxygen therapy. Now the arterial blood gas analysis contain many parameters. So those include the pH, the arterial oxygen saturation, the partial pressures of the oxygen and the carbon dioxide and the bicarbonate level and many more parameters such as the electrolytes such as the calcium the potassium and many more but we will talk about the ones related to the oxygen therapy and those include the ph so the normal ph is between 7.35 to 7.45 now if the patient ph is below 7.35 then this means that the patient in acidosis but if it is more than 7.45 then the patient is in alkalosis now regarding the arterial oxygen saturation so the normal is from 94 percent to 100 percent but if the oxygen saturation is below 90 percent then this is called hypoxemia now we also have the arterial oxygen partial pressure and the normal is from 80 to 100 millimeters mercury or it is from 10.6 to 13 kilopascals and if the patient oxygen partial pressure is less than 60 millimeters mercury or less than 8 kilopascals then this is hypoxemia and we also have the arterial carbon dioxide partial pressure and the normal is from 35 to 45 millimeters mercury or from 4.6 to 6 kilopascals and if the patient arterial partial pressure is more than 45 or more than 6 then this means that the patient have respiratory acidosis and it means the patient is hypoventilating but if the carbon dioxide partial pressure was less than 35 or less than 4.5 then this means that the patient have respiratory alkalosis and it means that the patient is hyperventilating finally we have the bicarbonate so the normal is from 22 to 26 millimoles per liter and if the patient bicarbonate is more than 26 then it means that they have metabolic alkalosis and if their bicarbonate is less than 22 then they have metabolic acidosis now here we have some important notes so the hypoxia means low oxygen level at the tissues while hypoxemia means low oxygen level in the arterial blood and dyspnea does not necessarily indicate hypoxemia because severe hypoxemia can be present without dyspnea and the opposite is true now let's talk about the oxygen therapy adverse effects so the oxygen should not be used routinely unless there is evidence of hypoxia because when used in excessively high concentrations it can result in oxygen toxicity and oxygen toxicity would lead to lung damage central nervous system damage and eye damage and this would ultimately lead to respiratory failure and death and the oxygen can also dry out the airways if used without humidification leading to irritation of the nose the pharynx the trachea and the airways and this would lead to mucus hypersecretion now in infants with respiratory failure administration of high levels of oxygen may promote the overgrowth of new blood vessels in the retina of the eye of the infant leading to blindness now this condition is known as retinopathy of a prematurity now the oxygen therapy may also lead to the carbon dioxide retention in those at risk especially those who have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and titration of saturations 
of 88 to 92 percent in these patients is the preferred to prevent the carbon dioxide retention. Now let's talk a little bit about the carbon dioxide retention. So in patients with COPD who receive supplementary oxygen, the carbon dioxide retention can occur with two mechanisms. Those include the increase in oxygen saturation of the blood reduces the deoxygenated hemoglobin, which carries the carbon dioxide in the blood in the form of the bicarbonate. And since we have less deoxygenated hemoglobin capable of carrying the carbon dioxide, this means that we have higher carbon dioxide levels because those are still in the body, they can't get out. And this means we have more carbon dioxide retention. And carbon dioxide retention also can occur because in the patient with COPD, the hypoxia is the main drive of respiration. So if 100% of oxygen was administered, then the hypoxia is corrected and the hypoxic drive is lost, leading to hypoventilation and more CO2 retention. Now the CO2 retention may lead to headache, drowsiness, central nervous system depression, and death. Now again, in patients with COPD, carbon dioxide toxicity can be prevented by maintaining the oxygen saturation between 88 to 92 percent. And finally, let's talk about some hazards and risks that comes with the oxygen therapy. So the oxygen itself is not flammable but the addition of concentrated oxygen to a fire greatly increases its intensity and concentrated oxygen can also aid in the combustion of material that are relatively inert under normal conditions so the oxygen is dangerous and it can lead to explosions and fire and with that we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please give us a like, comment your ideas and questions, and subscribe.